Right, okay, in today's episode, we're gonna follow on from uh, well, what I filmed earlier on this week, and that was what I consider to be the most forgiving golf clubs of 2022. Now, if you didn't watch that video, then alongside me now is the list of suggested models that you potentially look at if you're ideally looking for some help on the fairways and ultimately forgiveness. I say within the video, there's a couple of options within there. So certainly go back and watch that if there's a particular interest. But what I also said in that video, that I was then going to play nine holes with this most forgiving golf clubs of 2022 setup. So I'm going to go over to the first tee at Carden Park. It starts off with a par four. We're both going to watch it. I'll talk you through my thought process. I'll talk you through which golf clubs I actually used. So if we are ready, the first tee, and it is a, uh, well, it's the Rogue Driver. I did say to Hannah before I teed it off with my, uh, with the tee that we were on, we had to go over the trees and we managed to do that. Shot Tracer does it a bit of an injustice. It wasn't quite as left to right as I remember, but so uh, we did go straight to that bunker that you can see in the distance. So that's a bit unfortunate. So we've now got one of the uh, Seasol wedges from Cleveland. Um, and what I like about these that they're very very versatile and straight away we're playing out of the sand a um, we've got about 89 yards down pump down the hill which left us then a wedge into the green it's that very same wedge that I play again and uh, to be honest with you this really was an half decent shot right at the uh, at the flag it looked closer than I actually was and uh, got a bit of spin as well this popped back a couple of feet so again game improvement wedges do spin Put up the L, two ball 10 is the putter, and uh, didn't quite get the pace there. Line was probably quite good, but a uh, fairly straightforward bogey, let's call it, after going into the fairway bunker, that was always gonna be an issue. So onto the second, this green plays about 315 off these yellows, and I'm playing a nine wood. Now this is one of my favorite clubs right now in terms of that forgiveness uh, category. Uh, left of my initial aim I am literally trying to go down the center or tight to that left tree but certainly not over them but I was amazed at how far this thing traveled um, we basically reached what are just short of greenside bunkers not ideal again we found a bunker and this is not an easy shot so again smart soul wedge from Cleveland as we all know this sort of 30 yard bunker shot is not an easy one the Cleveland wedge picks it up nice and clean and we're just about finding a green there and getting yourself a chance to uh, get out the bunker and get on the green. So roll up the, uh, the two ball 10 putter. Again, not quite got the pace, just a little bit short. I tapped this one in for a four, but interestingly enough, what you can't see is left of that flag right now is not a lot of green. So just going back to the bunker shot, the whole thing about that was being long. All the trouble was front. So I had a bunker in the front, we had no green in the front. So being long was the optimum choice there. So 160, seven iron, 0211 Z from PXG iron. These are some real chunky irons. And I've got to say, if we had the audio on, this was such a nice solid clip and it's right at the flag. If you see where the flag is, which you'll get to very soon, then you'll uh, you'll see it's on a horrendous position in terms of the tier that it's on. And we're not only coming up the hill, but there's a severe right to left. So not easy. So the two ball 10, I better find the pace that I didn't do with the first two. And um, I've got to say, I'm more than happy with that. Real difficult putt. You'll see me almost uh, climbing up that rise there. It's a significant uh, change in elevation. And we've made a nice three. Another point to mention there is that seven iron that popped into it actually landed on the top tier was the ball mark and fizzed back. So again, this idea that, you know, game improvement irons have lack spin and control, absolute nonsense. Right, Rogue Driver, um, aiming left of center. I'm real open on the stance here and we've cut one from left to right. How do you quantify forgiveness? I've just said this is the most forgiving driver on the planet. Um, for me, all I can say is the ball has traveled a long way from an extremely poor shot. Right, recognizing that that swing wasn't great. And now with a tour edge, this is a five hybrid. Nestled down in the rough, when looking to this a par five, we've managed to knock that up another 180 yards or so. And again, it's what those clubs do so, so well. Um, and all of a sudden we're back in position on a par five. Awkward little one, I suppose. We've got 70 yards in. I'm going back to the CBX wedge. 
Interestingly enough, these come in a, um, a gap wedge, a lob wedge, and also the chipper. The only wedge that I had was the uh, was the gap wedge. So I'm playing with sort of one loft, which I believe was 52 degrees. So we had to sort of be a bit versatile with this. And uh, as you can see, half decent wedge shot, and um, we were literally one pop away from being extremely close. So we are on the fringe again. This is all about. How many puts am I expecting to make from here? I don't know. Maybe two from ten. It's maybe less than that. But uh, we're just looking to give it a roll. It was a decent effort. Line was right. Still struggling with the pace a little bit. Yet again, that would have uh, wilted just a little bit short. But it was an easy five. And, uh, you know, again, this is about using forgiving clubs. How much forgiveness did I get there? I don't know. The drive was really, really poor. And the ball travelled further than I think it had any right to. So sticking with it, but a bit more of a committed swing, aiming down the left. Oh and uh, to be honest with you, that was a horrendous drive that I hit on the previous hole. And this was as good as I have got. This rogue is, it's a long, long driver. And uh, that got that right out there. We've left right on the edge here of sort of 110 into the green. Don't forget, I've only got that one wedge to play with. Um, so this is kind of full swing, full tilt. And I had said to Hannah before I hit it, this is just going to get front edge if we're lucky. Solid ball. Love the way the ball flight comes out of these things. Again, I can't speak highly enough. Right, we're quick on the putt there. Um, got the pace, got past the hole. We're getting there. Downhill putt though, slightly different there. But again, a real comfortable and straightforward four. On a hole that, to be honest with you, is uh, it's it's not too easy. Right, on this hole is an interesting one. You can see water all down that left-hand side. Uh, very much a dog leg right to left. I took the um, the Cleveland Highwood out, which again is a real favorite of mine. 18 degrees aloft. Um, it's all about forgiveness, this thing, and all about how high this thing launches now. Easy it launches, but what you can't do is go as tight down the left as I'm trying to do so there. And whilst it was a real good strike, I can't tell you how good I hit this. The ball trace has almost got that spot on because I landed above dry ground, which I'm telling the camera, but I took a bounce to the left and, uh, as you can see, ended up in the water. So, yeah, forgiving it might be, but it doesn't forgive you if you get the line completely wrong and get really greedy. So back to the CBX wedge. You'll notice where the flag position is. I'm not going for the flag because it's too dangerous. There's too much risk element in terms of the bunker. There's no green at the back of it. So I was playing for centre to right of the flag, and again, yardage a little bit a little bit wrong. I'd have wanted to be um, obviously on that top tier, but the main thing is if I'd have took that shot on and gone straight at the flag, I'd have been in the bunker. So still, the right decision to have gone uh, left of bunker, left of flag, and don't get greedy. And um, yeah, that's again a severe tear in that green, and as you can see. Um, that putt is real, real decent pace. So what were we? One, drop two, played three, four. So a five, we take a bogey with a drop. Look, you've got to, some days it ain't going to work out and uh, you've got to take your punishment. But it's all again about game management and not making that what a double bo uh, bogey turned out to be. Don't make it a double. Right, nine wood, uh, awkward hole this one. There's a quite um, broad, wide brook that runs across the fairway. And you've got two choices, you either go and take it on or you lay up short. And with the nine wood, I've laid up short. Again, good strike, good position. And I'm playing nine wood again. Um, into the breeze a bit. This is a real good strike. And it's traveled, I think from memory, we had about sort of 190 into that flag. We've come up just a little bit short into the breeze. But I just like the fact that it's, it's got me down there nice and easy. Um, I'm not struggling with this at all. The infamous ping chipper now, just in theory, we uh, keep on running up the green. Again, for me, it's about percentages. I could, in theory, take on. I've got a sort of, um, well, I've got the gap wedge. You could be playing with a highly lofted wedge and potentially throw it all away. But for me, that's where the chipper is the club that you, you know, you want. You want those percentages, and the thing is with that, you just chip it up, and you know, in theory, you're gonna give yourself a chance of still making that putt, and ultimately making par. We just need to move on a little bit, because it's a while before I appear. I've gone to get my putter, clearly. Hurry up, hand.
well we don't seem to have my put there so I'm not too sure what has happened but my put is not uh, but I can tell you that I did hold the put so I'm not too sure what's gone there we seem to have lost the clip anyway on to the part three and uh, this is now again 110 right on the limit in terms of this uh, sort of 52 wedge look how the ball flight is superb and I've got it going right at the flag to be honest with you but you can see the smile on my face I always knew the chances were that was going to pop up a little bit short I mean obviously if I was playing this as a full bag I'd have I'd have um, additional wedges in to cover that um, that distance but I don't this is the only one I've got from Cleveland and I've played it in the bunker shot as well so that was a 52 wedge out of the bunker which uh, with a club face opened up so again we've had to make do a little bit with the wedge and uh, try and make it work a little bit but it certainly caused issues and at two ball ten like i always say they'll help you but they don't put them in the hole for you and unfortunately that's a three footer missed i say a pretty poor bogey but when you go in a green side bunker you know chances are you're not going to get up and down uh, every time I've gone with the, um, interesting enough, I've gone with the Highwood here. It's a tight hole, it is a par five, but I just love the control that I've got with the Highwood. And um, it's just knocked one down there, that left to right shape suits me. This is one that uh, you'd be interested in. This is a five iron, but it's the DHY from Taylor Made. And I've got to say, the same old thing for me, it's all about control and it's all about how ease of use. And I'm loving these things right now. That pops the ball up it's gone another sort of 170 180 yards down the fairway and I'm into the sort of seven iron of the 0211 Z which I didn't hit particularly well but there is a good thought process behind this you'll see where the flag is and you'll see the line direct to the flag is um, has got a huge bunker in front of it now if you get the, if you aim for the flag and you get the perfect shot then we've got sort of I don't know maybe five to eight yards to work with in terms of green so that has got to be the perfect seven iron. So what I, my alignment is to right of the bunker. So I'm not playing to the flag, I'm playing right of the bunker and I'm playing to what is the majority of the green. So almost half the green that I'm looking at is right of that bunker. And what that allows is two things is if I don't get it quite right, which like I said, that's a really tough shot at that flag anyway. If I don't get it right, I'm in the bunker. If I don't get this one right, then I land short maybe, I land fringe, or as I've done, I don't get it quite right, but I still manage to get myself into the green. And it's such, you know, I'm no expert in terms of course management, but what I do know is in terms of the shots that you should take on and the shots that you shouldn't take on. And a lot of that is a consideration of your ability as well. So I think, you know, there's key, like I said, I don't want to preach to anybody, but that's a certainly a way of making sure that you don't take multiple shots that you don't need to. Uh, when playing a game of golf even though as you can see it's left there uh, I mean it's a huge putt it's a big ask for a two putt but I'd rather be there than in the bunker and uh, putter in hand would always be a preferred club of choice and basically I misread this I hit a real good uh, roll in terms of pace and uh, I just thought that that ball would swing from right to left and uh, well it didn't move at all it was virtually a straight putt and I've left a, an eight footer for par to finish off the front nine and I couldn't remember whether I made that or not but as you can see I didn't so just rolled that one by so that would have ended up being a bogey could have been potentially worse if we'd gone direct at the flag and hopefully from this side you can actually see just how much green we have to work with behind the back of that bunker so a little bit of course management I walked off with a bogey potentially would have walked off with a double so going back to the initial video what it was all about and that was about using forgiving golf clubs I'm not sure we I learned a great deal to be honest with you there was a drive that I hit which was horrendously poor that went far longer than it should have done I think the CB uh, not the CBX wedge the um, what's the name of the wedge the Cleveland the uh, Sea Soul are they called Smart Soul even I think I've called them Sea Soul throughout the Smart Soul wedges I think are a really really clever addition to anyone's bag if you're struggling with your short game short game and long wedge in you can see the ball flight and the way it picks it up after all kinds of um lies it's very very consistent it's a super wide sole and i think they help out considerably the iron again although it only featured in two shots was it maybe three shots that i played throughout that nine holes 
really really do exactly the same as the CBX wedges plenty of um, weight down at the back side of it it's a bulbous crown but you've got that CG at the back helps you launch the ball it's got fast ball speed so again really really good um, the nine wood again I talk about having the addition of lofted woods and we might as well talk about lofted hybrids at the same time because that loft is just it's a massive help for average golfers and the distance that I lose between a nine wood and a five wood is negligible yeah, it might be 20 yards or so I don't know but what what it does I've got far greater help and forgiveness that that loft provides me than I have with taking a five and certainly a three wood uh, which becomes a very difficult club to play as we all know so that's it nine holes done I have no idea what the score was I wasn't keeping count no doubt you can probably remind me it was a uh, reasonable nine holes without playing my best and maybe forgiveness did help me in those clubs I don't know right as ever let me know what you think of today's video give me your comments down below um, let me know what you thought of the course management in today's video and uh, I'll see you all very soon